In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. O most loving and merciful God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we give you thanks to O most loving and merciful Father for this great opportunity, allowing us to celebrate and offer this most holy and adorable sacrifice of the Mass, especially today. The whole Catholic Church is celebrating the feast of the Divine Maternity or Motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Father, thank you so much for this great opportunity, allowing us once again today to unite ourselves into the Church to offer and to celebrate the greatest things of heaven the Mass, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the Mass of all the ages, the Mass of all times, and the Mass of our own time. Fathers, we come together today reflecting to the word of Jesus Christ, your Son, as found in the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, that says, Where two or three that gather together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Father, we come together today as one family of St. Michael the Archangel and one church, the mystical body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We give you thanks to Father God for this great opportunity once again to make us worthy to celebrate and offer this holy and uh, pleasing sacrifice before your holy presence and also allowing us worthy to receive the perpetual fruits and merits of Christ's sacrifice on the cross as uh, revealed in this celebration today. Lord, once again, we ask forgiveness, remissions, and pardon of our sins, both mortal and venial sins. And all those people who are present and gathered together in this celebration, and also those people whom we promise to pray that they will be included in our community prayers, in our every prayer, especially on praying the rosary and on daily masses. Lord, once again, thank you so much for your continuing presence of love, mercy, compassion, forgiveness, and above all, for the gift of eternal life that you have given to each and every one of us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, at the Spirit we sanctify. Amen. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, today the whole Catholic Church throughout the world, as far as the traditional uh, liturgical calendar or Latin Mass is concerned. So we are celebrating the feast of the motherhood or the divine maternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And uh, I would like to, to read and proclaim the, the Word of God, the Holy Gospel today, as found in the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew, St. Luke rather, chapter 2, verses 46 up to 51, for us to have a better understanding of the Gospel for today. Luke chapter 2, verses 46 up to 51. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his wisdom and his answers. And seeing him, they wondered. And his mother said to him, Son, why hast thou done so to us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the word that he spoke unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, 
and was subject to them. And his mother kept all these words in her heart. That would be the gospel for today. So my dear friends, brothers and sisters, allow me to explain or to, to give a little bit a reflection about the gospel for today in connection to the celebration or to the feast, the divine maternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. First, I reflected upon the Word of God in the Holy Scriptures on the Introi Itom, as found in the book of Prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. The Bible says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive a son, and you shall name him Emmanuel. So the word of God, according to Prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14, makes a prophecy concerning the coming or the incoming, the Son of God, the Emmanuel, through a virgin woman. But Prophet Isaiah did not uh, give a particular name of that woman. He did not give a particular name of that woman as found in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. But he simply prophesied that a woman shall conceive and bear a son and you shall name him Emmanuel. Another thing is that Prophet Isaiah also did not give the proper interpretation or the meaning of the name or the word Emmanuel in the book of Prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. But we, we come to the knowledge of truth or the knowledge concerning the particular name of that woman as uh, expressed and prophesied by Prophet Isaiah in chapter 7, verse 14, that that woman is now revealed in the New Testament as found in the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. The evangelist Matthew reiterated and reflected upon the word, the prophecy of Prophet Isaiah, that a woman shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Now, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, Matthew the evangelist said that the name of that woman is nothing but the Blessed Virgin Mary herself. And also in verse 23 up to 24, Evangelist Matthew gives the meaning of the word Emmanuel, which means that God is with us. So what I'm trying to say, to teach, and to explain the biblical explanation concerning the maternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, first and foremost, that it was the Blessed Mother Mary, the chosen daughter of God the Father, from eternity to eternity, from everlasting to everlasting, even before the foundation of the world, God the Father, the eternal God and the Father in heaven has chosen already the Blessed Mother to be the mother of His only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world. Now, Evangelist Matthew knows well that it was the Blessed Mother is the concrete and fulfillment of the prophecy of Prophet Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, that that woman is nothing but the Blessed Virgin Mary herself. And it was then that the Blessed Virgin Mary who bore a son and that Son then is nothing but the person of the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. 
So the second person of the most holy trinity, Jesus Christ himself, the God-man, he is an Emmanuel. God is with us. So it is God, it is God the Son in the person of Jesus Christ who comes down from heaven and solemnly entered into the womb, into the blessed womb of the blessed Virgin Mary. So the God of heaven, as far as the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, solemnly entered into a particular time and particular uh, family, the family of Mary and Joseph. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph of Nazareth. So the God, the second person of the Trinity, entered into a particular time, history, and family. The family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph of Nazareth. So, the Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So the son of Mary is Jesus Christ himself, the, 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 the God-man, uh, the Theos Anthropos. Theos means God, Anthropos meaning man. Meaning Jesus Christ is true God and true man. 100% divine and 100% human, the, the totality of 100% in the very person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, the Blessed Mother Mary, the fundamental rule of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the history and the economy of salvation, first and foremost, the vocation, the mission of the Blessed Mother is, is already uh, written in the heart of God the Father from eternity. To be the mother of his son Jesus Christ so that the, the gift of salvation would come to us no? by the great fear of Mama Mary. Yes, Lord, I am the handmaid of yours. Let it be done to me according to the word. So the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ himself, entered into the blessed womb of Mama Mary. In the Holy Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verse 2, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That is John, chapter 1, verse 14. So, in the context of the history and story, and even in the economy of salvation, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Great Immaculate Mother of God, has been performing a very important and indispensable role for our salvation. First, by her Divine Motherhood. Now, the Council of uh, Ephesus, part of the sacred apostolic tradition and magisterium or the teaching of the church magisterium. Say, for example, Council of Ephesus in the year 431 AD. Define its dogma that the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of the Emmanuel, shall be called mother or under the title Theotokos. Say it, Theotokos. What is that Theotokos? Theotokos is a Greek word from the word Theos. No? Theos. Theotokos meaning the bearer of God or the mother of God. So the sacred scripture proved that the Blessed Mother Mary, you know, according to the eternal will, plan, and purpose of God, that the Son of God, the Jesus Christ himself would enter into the womb of the Blessed Mother Mary. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, it says that when the appointed time comes, when the fullness of time comes, God the Father in heaven has sent His only begotten Son, 
by a woman so that those who are under the law would be redeemed and to become an adopted sons and daughters of our God and Heavenly Father in heaven. So that the plan, that's the mission of God. Why God chose Mary to be the mother of His Son and also to be our mother too. Now, in the Holy Gospel of St. John chapter 19, verses 25 up to 27, allow me to read the Bible. Estabant autem yukta crucem Jesu mater eius, et toror matris eius Maria Cliope, et Maria Magdalena. Compedicet ergo Jesus, matrem et discipulum istantem, quem deligiva, dicit matre sue mulier ece filius tuus. De ende dicet discipulum ece mater tua, et ex elahora acipet iam discipulus in sua. Now in English translation, brothers and sisters, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus, therefore, had seen his mother and the disciples standing whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And verse 27, After that he said to his disciples, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. As part of our application as Catholic believer, first and foremost, this is one of the biblical reasons why Catholics, why do Catholics call Mary as mother? Where can we find in the Holy Scripture, in the Holy Bible, that Jesus wanted us to call his mother Mary as our mother? Now, in the Holy Gospel of St. John 19, verses 25 up to 27, when Jesus Christ was hung upon the cross, when he was crucified unto the altar of the cross, and when he saw his mother, he said to his mother, this is your son. Then to when he looked up to his mother, he said, this is your son. And to the disciple, Jesus said, This is your mother. Now it is the will of God through the person of Jesus Christ, the crucified Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross, that every believer must call, must recognize and accept the truth that the Blessed Mother, the person of Mary, shall also be recognized and accepted by every believer and to be called her as our mother too. And that's the will of God. That's the will of Jesus on the cross. That is why we Catholics call Mary us mother. That is why today the whole Catholic Church is celebrating, commemorating the feast of Mary, Mary's motherhood or divine maternity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Divine Maternity, Mary, Mother of God, Theotokos. Now the Catholic Church teaches, say for example, in the context of the Trinitarian theology or belief, the Catholic Church called Mary as daughter of God the Father. The Blessed Mother is, the, the Blessed Virgin Mary is what we call the daughter of God, the, the, the mother of God, and the spouse of God, and the temple of God. Now, if we do not really know and understand well our Catholic faith and doctrines or our Catholic dogma and history, most probably, will be living and abandoning 
our Catholic faith, departing from the Catholic Church and joining to other denominations, to the other fundamentalist uh, denominations, if we do not really know about the dogma of our Catholic Church. Now, the Catholic Church called Mary as daughter of God. Now, Mary is called as daughter of God to the person of God the Father, the first person of the most holy trinity. So Mary, in her relation to God, is what we call the beloved daughter of God the Father, the Almighty God and Father. Now Mary is called as uh, the mother of God no? in reference to the person of Jesus Christ the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. So Mary, the mother of God, in the person of Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world. Now, Mary is also called as the daughter or the spouse of God in the person of the Holy Spirit. That is why Mary is what you call the spouse of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son. Now, St. Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo, said that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the mutual love of the Father and the Son. And Mary also is called the, the Temple of God. The temple of God in reference to our fundamental belief on the dogma of the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That the heart or the person, the life of the Blessed Mother Mary is indeed the temple of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Gospel of St. Luke chapter 1, verse 35, the angel Gabriel said in reply to the words or the clarificatory point of the Blessed Mother, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High God the Father will overshadow you and the Son to be born of you shall be called the Son of the Most High God. So Archangel Gabriel mentioned about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In other words, indirectly, the Blessed Virgin Mary is indeed the temple of the Most Holy Trinity. Now, brothers and sisters, how are we going to, to apply and to bring it down, the Word of God in the Holy Scripture and the teaching of the Catholic Church, the apostolic tradition, how are we going to integrate and to bring all those abstract truth and reality into a concrete realities in our lives as Catholic believers, as disciples of Jesus in our everyday walks of life. First application, lesson and reflection to each and every one of us that God the Father, the Almighty God and Father appointed Mary to be the mother of the son. And it is also the will of God that every one of us, every believer of Jesus Christ, every son and daughters of God and of the Catholic Church by virtue of the sacramental grace of baptism, he or she is summoned, is called by God to recognize Mary as our mother too. That is why we have this uh, perpetual Help. The Blessed Mother Mary is our perpetual help. No? Our Lady of perpetual help. Inahan sa kanunay panabang. Inahan sa kanunay mutaba. Kita mga anak sa kanunay pangayon. That's the first. Then, it is the will of God. See, for example, in the Holy Gospel of St. John chapter 19, verses 25 to 27, then Jesus Christ from the altar of the cross, he said to his disciples, This is your mother. 
So Jesus wants us to recognize, to believe, and accept the person of the Blessed Mother Mary to be our mother too. And that is the biblical truth. That is the, the ecclesiastical truth, the dogma of the Catholic Church, that the person of Mama Mary truly is our mother. Because God wants us to recognize and to accept her as our mother. The rule of John the Beloved in the Gospel of St. John 1925 up to 27, the person of John the Beloved is indeed representing the whole Catholic Church, representing the whole community of believers in the Church. And when Jesus said and proclaimed from the cross, this is your mother, pointing out to the person of John the Beloved, that the rule or and function of the person of John the Beloved representing the whole church, the whole community. So therefore, it is a tantamount of saying that every believer, every disciple of Jesus, like John the Beloved, must recognize, must believe, and accept the word of Jesus from the altar of the cross. To believe and accept that Mary is our mother. That is why we pray in the Ave Maria, Ave Maria, Gratia Plena, Dominus Tecum, Benedicta Twin Moliarimus, Set Benedictus Fructus Petris Quiesu, Santa Maria Mother Dei, Holy Mary, Mother of God, Ora Pronobus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. That's the prayer of the whole Catholic Church, the mystical body, and the most illustrious spouse of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mother of God, Theotokos. So let us uh, be thankful and grateful to God, my dear friends and brothers, because our Catholic faith is indeed biblical, founded on the Word of God in the Holy Scripture, both Old and New Testament. And our Catholic faith also as part of our dogma, it proves in history and even in the Council of Ephesus, Java, in the year 431 AD, it was Saint Cyril of Alexandria who defended the Mariology or the Marian doctrines in the Catholic Church and uh, defended it that Mary is to be called as Theotokos, Mother of God. The second application in our Catholic journey of life, my dear friends, brothers, and sisters, we are so blessed. We are so blessed indeed, my dear friends and brothers, because we have this mother. Unlike the other religion, unlike the other denomination, they do not recognize Mary as mother of God. They do not recognize the person of Mary performing the, the, the very great role in the plan and the economy of salvation. But for us Catholics, we have this mother. We have this big family, the divine family. And we have this Mama Mary, our mother, our lady of perpetual health. And let us know this, brothers and sisters, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, even today, in the kingdom of heaven, because she assumed gloriously to the kingdom of heaven, both body and soul, and some would say and ask a question, Father, what did Mama Mary do in this time in heaven? Now, Mama Mary, the Blessed Mother in heaven, she is always praying, she is always interceding for us. She is always praying to God through her son Jesus Christ for our own behalf, for our own benefit, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the salvation of our souls. Salus animarum suprema lex estu. Salvation of the salvation of the souls is the greatest law of the church. Like Mama Mary, she is always praying for us. She is always interceding for us. She is always helping for us not to become, not to be punished in hell. 
So the prayer of the Blessed Virgin Mary is indeed very powerful and effective before the holy presence of God through Jesus Christ, her Son. No prayer, take note, my dear friends, brothers and sisters, no prayers, no petitions, no adoration that God would not receive from Mama Mary through her son, Jesus Christ. Say, for example, in the, in the wedding of Cana, Mama Mary requested to her, to her son, Jesus Christ, na wala na sila'y bino. Na hurot ng bino na maulawan sila. Woman, what is that to you and what is that to me? But Mama Mary answered nothing. Then she went to the other place, in the kitchen, most probably. Then he said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Then that was the first miracle because of Mary's request to her son, Jesus Christ, then Jesus was forced to perform miracle. Even though the time has not yet come. But because of her, because of his mother's request, Jesus, as an obedient son to his mother, then he has to obey the request, the prayer of his mother. That is why in our own time today, no, it is good for us Catholic brothers and sisters to ask something from the Lord, yes. But it is also good for us to ask intercession and help from our Mother Mary. Because she is very powerful. St. Alfonso's Maria de Ligori, no, I remember the book that written by St. Alfonso Maria de Ligori, entitled The Glories of Mary. Then St. Alfonso in that book said that after the name Jesus, the name Mary is very powerful. And even the demons fear Mary. Hmm. So very beautiful, very amazing, hmm. our Catholic faith on Mary, our Catholic doctrine on the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, third application, since then we know already the importance or the, the rule of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the life and mission of the Catholic Church, so it is good for us to unite our faith, to unite our prayers in the faith and prayers of the Catholic Church, what is that prayer? Well, the Ave Maria. The moment we pray the Ave, Ave Maria by faith and by love, then we are uniting ourselves to the mind and heart of God the Father. And we are also uniting ourselves by faith and love to Saint, Ma, Saint Gabriel, the Archangel. Ave Maria, gratia plena, dominus teco. Because that prayer comes from the host of God the Father in heaven. As proclaimed by Saint Gabriel. So once we pray the Ave Maria with faith, hope and love, with devotion and passion, then we are uniting ourselves to the mind and heart of God the Father and the angel Gabriel. That is why our prayer is very effective and very powerful. And also the moment we pray Ave Maria, Gratia plena dot dot dot. And then when we pray, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We are also uniting our prayers, our faith to the church. Because that is the prayer, that is the response of the church, the physical body of Jesus Christ. To God the Father and to the proclamation of Saint Gabriel in the history and the story of Incarnation. Fourthly, brothers and sisters, it is good for us to continue to pray the rosary every day. Every day we have to pray the rosary. Mama Mary, when she appeared at Fatima, then one of her instructions is to pray the rosary. Because many dumb souls, many 
many people dumb to hell because nobody prays for them. And also the word of Mama Mary to Saint Dominic. He said to Mama Mary, uh, said, uh, he said, she said to uh, Saint Dominic, one day I will save the world through my rosary and by winning the broad scapular and the true peace will be given to the world. Pray the rosary, pray the rosary. When you pray the rosary, the devil, the enemies, and all his satanic forces are indeed absent. Once we pray the rosary with faith, with hope, and with love. So we hope and pray, brothers and sisters, that by the power of Mama Mary's intercession, through this holy sacrifice of the Mass, our faith in God, our love and devotion to Mama Mary would be gradually increasing and progressing until the end of time when Christ returns in the second coming. When the last trumpet of God sounded, then Jesus Christ, according to the teaching of St. Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, God of heaven in the person of Jesus will come down. So let's pray and let's unite all our petitions, our prayer to the holy sacrifice of the mass, to the intention of the priest and to the intention of the church, that our faith would always be united to Jesus Christ and his mystical body of the church. And therefore, we must always be united to the most infinite life and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the only way, the truth, and the life to the Father. May God bless us all. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.